Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on physical geography of late on my channel. So in this session, in the last lecture of this physical geography segment, today we are going to learn about the rocks and minerals. So various types of rocks like igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic rocks and its various physical and chemical characteristics, various process of formation and associated features. So these are the important ingredients of today's session. But before we go ahead, please like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share the playlist and the videos with others as well. So let's understand about these rocks and minerals as basic component of the geological study as well and it has also importance in geographical studies, basically part of geomorphology. So what are these rocks and minerals? So remember the French word is rook, that is Latin word rocca. So these are the root words from which the word rocks have come up and which basically means what? Of certain origin, stone, mass of mineral matter. So this is what is the basic meaning of rocks. Then this word mineral comes from Latin word mineralis, which basically means pertaining to mines. So the material that is coming from mines is called mineralis in Latin and which is the key word for this word minerals. So these rocks and minerals are one of the most important building blocks of geographical studies as well and geological studies as well. So let's understand about various types and characteristics of these rocks and minerals. So what is a rock? A rock is basically what? A naturally occurring coherent aggregate of one or more minerals. So if these are different minerals and they aggregate together in a coherence, in a single way, then this is called coherent aggregate which is known as rock. The scientific study of rocks is known as petrology. So remember this petrology, this is the scientific study of rock. And remember the word petroleum. So what is that? It is again derived from the interior of the earth like rock as well so it is called petroleum so the word is petro that is derivation of rock so it is also known as rock oil that's why so any natural mass of mineral matter that makes up the earth's crust is called a rock so rocks can be different in color size texture so remember these are important features or characteristics on which we determine that which rock is of what type and what it should be called so the basis of classification of rock is these physical characteristics basically the color size texture and so many other things so rocks can be of any size if we talk about size so some are smaller than grains of sand to size of a house so if you look into this image these smaller grains are also part of the rocks while this huge boulder as you see this kind of erratic what we say or this kind of boulder which is there part of a core stone that is singular boulder placed on a flat plane so these are called core stone as well so these are certain scale range that you can see in the size of a rock now based on the process of formation if you observe there are three major groups of rocks so one where you have a lava or magma so that is called igneous rock so cooling of igneous rocks so making of igneous rock is from this magma or the volcanic activity then sedimentary rocks, the word itself is sediments as we know. So the resultant of deposition of fragments of rocks derived from pre-existing rocks or of materials precipitated from the solutions. So that is where the sediments are derived and they fuse together and they form sedimentary rocks. And then the third one that we already know is the metamorphic rock. So when we say metamorphic, there are two words, morph and meta. Meta is basically what? Rock of a rock. So basically it is not a single rock, it is morphosed form of the pre-existing rock. That is why it is metamorphed. So morph is change in the shape. So morph is basically for the word shape. So it is a change of the shape. So why it happens? The process is metamorphosis. That is extreme pressure, temperature, movement of the earth and several millions and thousands of years it takes to form these metamorphic rocks. So now let's look at igneous rocks. The magma is the heart of this igneous rock. So this is what we see this molten magma coming out of the vent. So this is basic ingredient of what we say is igneous rock. It is composed of a mixture of molten or semi-molten rock along with gases and other volatile elements that. So what we observe is that when this magma cools, it turns into rock. Igneous rocks are unfossiliferous. Now here is a catch that these rocks are not fossiliferous. The reason is that this is high level of heating involved and then all those material or detritus, whichever would be part of this, would be assimilated into this entire 
hot molten magma. So this is completely non-fossily ferrous that is important. Also that second reason is that it is coming from the lower levels of the earth crust that is part of the upper mantle asthenosphere where mostly what we see is there is no presence of any flora or fauna. So that is another possible reason. So this is mostly unfossily ferrous and examples of this rock are granite, gabbro and basalt. Furthermore there are three types of igneous rocks based on place and time. Now remember place and time are important so place basically is what locational factor and time is what we understand that geography is made up of these two factors that is space and time so taken for cooling so basically what this time is for the cooling factor of this molten matter so there are certain rocks which are called plutonic rocks then we have volcanic rocks and then we have intermediate rocks the plutonic rocks are the most ancient archean types of rocks then what we know is the volcanic rocks which we have already discussed and there are certain intermediate rocks as well which are part of the meso nature in between nature so that is important in terms of the time factor that is taken for the cooling of this molten matter. So plutonic rocks are what? These intrusive type of rocks. Intrusive is which intrude, which is there in the layers. So when magma cools slowly at greater depths, that is important in the crustal part. So mineral grains formed in the rocks are very large. So such rocks are called intrusive rocks or plutonic rocks and these are best examples where granitic rocks are found. So granitic rocks are basically what we understand as intrusive or plutonic rock types. These rocks appear on the surface of the earth only after being uplifted or denuded. So upliftment or denudation is the process by which these rocks are exposed on the earth's surface that we understand as granite. So what we observe here is those minerals like quartz, feldspar, all these are part of these grains in that rock that we want to observe. And further, the cooling process is slow as we know. So this gives rise to the crystalline nature of this particular development. So as we see rock crystals, so why are these quartz crystals formed? Because of this cooling process that is slow in nature and this leads to the crystal formation as well in the plutonic rocks. Then further, extrusive igneous rocks. So these are lava or volcanic rocks. So sudden cooling of magma or lava results in small and smooth grain in rocks. So now here is the catch which is sudden cooling, not gradual cooling. So gradual cooling was grainy structure. This is a smooth structure. So it suddenly cools. Basically rapid cooling is involved here to prevent the crystallization. So these are fine grained rocks. So these are basically what example is basalt as we see this dark matter. So this is basaltic rock. It has heavier elements like iron, aluminium or magnesium as well and then it is denser and darker in color so for example Deccan Trap region in Indian Peninsula area we have this basaltic origin as we know so some volcanic rocks like obsidian for example don't have any crystals at all so obsidian is one of the examples which is completely crystal free now one more thing that we need to remember that not all magma is made equally. So this is a statement. Now let's understand how. They have different chemical compositions and quantities of gases and temperature which is trapped inside, right? So there are over 700 types of igneous rocks. So remember this is what is discovered till now. And they can be the hardest and heaviest of all rocks and they can be incredibly lightweight as well. So remember magma which is the basis of formation of these igneous rocks can be heavy as as well as very light for example pumice if you look into this image so pumice for example can even float and this was called by ancient sailors the foam of the sea as it used to float on the water so it is as light but it is an igneous rock so that is one of the best example and remember the foam of the sea which rock it's called pumice now the most common types of igneous rocks that we know by the names so remember the list of these names andesite basalt decite dolerite also known as diabase gabbro diorite peridotite nephilim then obsidian scoria tuff volcanic bomb tephra all these important materials are there and which are part of the major igneous rock types so that is important so this volcanic bomb is what we understand as this tephra material which comes out as we remember the process of volcanism you may go to the playlist of the physical geography and you can watch that video on volcanism as well for more clarity so all these things are part of this igneous rocks now going into this hyperbasal or dike rocks it means basically what you see here is these intrusive formations which are trapped inside so these are basically these dike rocks or intermediate rocks 
So these are not available on the surface. So rocks occupy an intermediate position between the deep seated plutonic bodies and the surface lava flows. These are called these hyperbasal or dike rocks or intermediate rocks. So dike rocks are semi crystalline in structure. So that is important to remember they are semi crystalline in structure and in the lectures on volcanoes and volcanic forms we have already learned about these features batholith, dikes, sills, all these features, lopolith and volcanic neck. So that is important, lacolith and facolith, all these important features we have already learned in that. Now metamorphic rocks are the next one. So metamorphic rocks as the word is it is metamorphosed. So what happens the rocks that are undergoing this process what we see is metamorphosis. So it means they are not the same. So suppose A is the initial type which goes into this process that is metamorphosis. Now it converts to B. So A is not similar to B. It is completely changed. So its structure is completely changed after the metamorphosis. So what is happening here is that entire initial rock surfaces which go through these millions of years of change and intense heat, pressure, they change in their structure. So they form a third kind of rock which is called metamorphic rock. So there are two types of metamorphism that is important. So contact metamorphism is the first type so which is also known as thermal metamorphism. So rocks are so close to magma that they start to partially melt and change their properties. That's why it is called contact metamorphism. So it has recrystallization happening. So earlier crystal is now changed into new crystal. Fusing between crystals a lot of other chemical reactions happen and temperature is the main factor here. So temperature changes lead to this thermal metamorphism and then there is regional metamorphism or dynamic metamorphism that happens typically when rocks are deep underground and they are subjected to massive pressure. So remember temperature is related to thermal or contact metamorphism, pressure is related to regional metamorphism or dynamic metamorphism. So what happens here? Elongation happens destroying the original features of the rock and pressure often times with temperature as well is the main driver here. So remember pressure and temperature factors and we have what here contact metamorphism and regional metamorphism that we need to understand as types of metamorphism. Then further some minerals are clear indicators of metamorphic process like garnet, chlorite, kyanite. So the changes are there that are involved in this which are of chemical environmental change. So mechanical dislocation are there and chemical recrystallization happens and these are the two important processes that are part of these changes or metamorphic processes. So what happens in mechanical dislocation? The rock or minerals are physically altered but in chemical their chemical composition, their chemical structure, their stability these things are now changed. So that is important here. So they are typically split into what? foliated metamorphic rocks and non-foliated metamorphic rocks. So what we understand is that pressure squeezes or elongates the crystals resulting in clear preferential alignment of these important rock structure and then non-foliated metamorphic rocks are that which don't have any foliations involved. So what the crystals have no preferential alignment it means they can be aligned in any particular direction random direction. So for example limestone they are made up of minerals that are simply not elongated. So remember foliated metamorphic, non-foliated metamorphic that are the basic two types that is dependent upon the pressure. So remember the regional metamorphism, pressure changes that is where it is important. The best example of a non-foliated metamorphic rock is what? So when you have limestone which is now completely metamorphosed into this marble factor. So we know the formation of marble and marble is a metamorphic form of limestone. So that is important. Apart from that, there are very common metamorphic rocks as we know. So for example, amphibolite, then we have schist, so blue schist, green schist, mica schist, depending upon what kind of mineral it is made from, then eclogite, nisic rock, hornfels, marble, migmatite, phyllite, quartzite, serpentinite, slate, all these rocks are the common examples to remember under metamorphic rocks. The next form of the rock very common as we know is the sedimentary rocks as we know it is also known as detrital rock. Why? Because it has layers of sediments which also contains remains of the plants and animals that is flora and fauna remains. So sedimentary rocks are named such because they were once sediments that is where their agglomeration the combination, the fusing together, the coalescence make these sedimentary rocks. So they are formed by a process which is called lithification. As you remember the word lith is related to rock. 
So lithification is formation of these sedimentary rocks and consolidation, compaction of these sediments lead to formation of these sedimentary rocks. So now going by statistics, it covers 75% of the earth's crust. So coming from the geosynclinal theory again, remember all those sediments falling into these geosynclines, compaction happening, formation of sedimentary rocks and young fold mountains happening. So that is another process related to it. So earth crust in area, but it is basically what 75% volumetrically it is 5% so by volume it is 5% by aerial coverage it is 75% that is to remember and this conglomerate as you see in this picture what is that it is combination of several such different gravels so what you see a rock structure which has different different important gravels and small pebbles which are fused together to form a single cemented rock. So what happens here? Lithification process happens and then this conglomerate is formed which is a sedimentary rock. Depending upon the mode of formation, sedimentary rocks are classified into these three important types. One is mechanically formed, then organically formed and then chemically formed. The word itself is mechanical. So sandstone, conglomerate, limestone, shale, Lewis, these are all mechanical sandstones that are formed. Then organically formed are giserite, chalk, limestone, coal. So these have organic remains, detrital rocks as we know. And then chemically is by chemical deformation, then fusing. So halite, potash, limestone. So limestone are organically as well, chemically as well formed. So that is important to remember here. Then further what we see is most common classification of the sedimentary rocks. So one is called clastic sedimentary rock. The word is clastic. So small rock fragments, mainly silicates that were transported and deposited by the water beds. So they fuse together. So what they form? Quartz, feldspar, mica, clay. These are basically the clastic ones. Then we have conglomerates as we saw in the previous image or they are also sometimes referred as brescias. So these brescias are what types of conglomerates basically. So they are predominantly composed of round gravel while brescias are composed of angular or sharper gravel. So it only depends upon are they round together or are they angular. So remember round and angular this can be part of river valley this can be part of a glaciated valley because angular rock is there then sandstones are important so it is what it is rock made from many sand size minerals so remember small sand deposits and then fuse together they form sandstone so the most dominant mineral in sandstone is quartz mineral this is that mineral which is one of the most common mineral on earth's surface crust that is important here mud rocks are another type so when they are solidified they are known as mud rock so solidified mud pieces so they typically contain very fine particles as you can understand suspended particles when they fuse together then biochemical rocks for example what you see here limestone on the face of the earth comes from biological sources like skeletals of organisms like corals molluscas and forminifera then what you have is coal is another example of biochemical rock so coal formation the maximum coal formation happened in which geological time period remember the, the carboniferous time so those coal deposits are largely the biochemical formation of these sedimentary rocks then chemical formation so remember gypsum and salt which is halite so these are the basic important chemical rocks and remember salt is one of the most consumed part in daily life we use it so this is what we understand as sedimentary rocks which is halite so what you see here is that salt is a mineral and remember it can be quite beautiful if you look at its crystal structure and yes this is called halite and it can be classified as a sedimentary rock and we consume this sedimentary rock every day in our lives. Last part of the rocks and minerals part is to understand finally this rock cycle. So remember earlier also during the denudational processes and other processes geomorphology we have studied about this rock cycle. So a rock cycle is something which is important here that regulates this operation that is change of forms from one to the other and continuation of it creates these various kinds of rock. So remember magma forms igneous rock then it is eroded and these sediments deposited here form sedimentary rock. So these sediments are derived from where? From this igneous. Now they form sedimentary rocks. They can directly these sediments form sedimentary rocks or they can further go to the more wear and tear and form soil as well. What you see here is when this sedimentary rocks goes to this heat and pressure, it forms a metamorphic rock, right? But remember, igneous rock directly can also go into this metamorphic rock. So igneous rock or sedimentary rock, both of them can get metamorphosed and then further it can get converted into magma under heat, that is immense heat and pressure inside the earth's surface. So what you observe in this cycle is that 
continuous or dynamism that is observed that is change of phases of these rocks from one to the other. So that is why this rock cycle leads to the maintenance of this geomorphology that we study in terms of these various rock types and various minerals and their structures with their physical properties, with their chemical properties. So that is important to remember under rocks and minerals. So now when we have completed the rocks and minerals portion, in the lectures to come, we are going to talk about other segments of the physical geography like climatology and hydrology and oceanography. So stay tuned, keep learning, best wishes.